And now, Death Valley Days. another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. It's the year 1861. Salt Lake City, now 15 years old, has grown from a struggling frontier settlement to a city of real size. Although to Wilhelmina Cannon, who has lived there only a year since she was married, it still seems a far cry from Boston. Come in. Evening, Sister Wilhelmino. Sister Sarah. David, not home yet. No, Brigham Young called a meeting for some of the men. And, uh, I don't know what for. I brought you some barley for the baby. Oh. Barley water's good for him. Thank you. If he wasn't asleep, I'd pick him up so you could see him. He's so darling. Embroidery and hand tucking on a boy. He's only three weeks old. My first two children were a flower sacking from the day they was born, and they was lucky to have that. Must have been dreadful those first years out here. Nobody will ever know. I couldn't have stood it. You can stand anything if you have to. I'm not so sure. Of course, I was raised to hard work, and you, you was raised as a lady. I've earned my own living. As a nursery governess in a fashionable family. Yes, but I... Playing the piano, doing embroidery, reading books. Speaking of books, see what just came from home. I sent back for them when we knew we were going to stay here. It's taken them a whole year to get here. Poetry. Oh, there are essays, too, and biographies. I'd like to know when you think you're going to have time for book reading. There's still plenty of work to be done here in Salt Lake City, and everyone's required to do his part. Well, at least I can enjoy looking at the covers. David's going to build me some bookshelves along that bare wall there. It'll dress up the room a lot. All the different colored bindings and gold lettering. Boil some of that barley up like I told you. Oh, good evening, Sister Sarah. Brother David. Take my advice and put that baby in unbleached muslin. The sooner he gets used to uncomfortable things, the better. <laughs> Poor sister Sarah. She makes such a grim business out of life. How are you, darling? And how's our boy been today? Just wonderful. He's growing like a weed, isn't he? Not a weed, a flower. Soon be able to travel, do you think? What do you mean? I have some news for you, Willie. Sit down while I tell you about it. The church is establishing a new colony in the southern part of Utah, down near the Arizona border. I've heard talk about it. The Dixie Mission, they call it. It's a, it's a project that Brigham Young has had in mind for some time now. A place where we could grow our own cotton and sugar. You see, now with the war on, there's even more reason for it. The regular sources of cotton and sugar will be cut off for many years, maybe. But what's all this got to do with us, David? With you and me? We've been called, darling. We're one of the 300 families who've been chosen to go. Oh, David. It's a great privilege, Willie, an opportunity to render real service to the church, do some pioneering for it. How far is this... this place? About 275 miles from here. What is there there? Good soil for growing cotton and sugar. Nothing else? You mean, it's a wilderness? Just like this valley was when the first company moved here. And see what they've done with it in the space of a few years. The words of the prophet have been fulfilled. The wilderness and the solitary places shall be glad for them. 
and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. I won't go. We can't refuse. It's not fair. We've been called, darling. Well, let them call somebody else. We only just settled here in Salt Lake City, David. Just built our home and furnished it. And the baby. He's only a few weeks old. Darling, we weren't picked by accident. We were chosen like all the other 299 families for a very good reason. What reason? Every trade and occupation has to be represented in this new colony. It's highly important. And you? I'll farm, of course. Sweetheart, I know how hard it is for you to pull up stakes when you've just begun to get used to things here, but... Well, St. George won't be a wilderness for very long. But that's what the new settlement is going to be called, St. George. I, I like the name, don't you? It, it has a certain ring to it. David, I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, darling. I'm not a very good pioneer, I'm afraid. Or a very good wife, either. You're the sweetest wife a man was ever blessed with. And I love you. I love you too, David. Wherever you go, I'll go. Six weeks it took him to make the journey from Salt Lake City south. Six long, weary weeks, creaking endlessly through desert sand, bumping and swaying over rocks, toiling up steep grades and sliding precariously down even steeper ones. Until at last they lumbered through a mountain pass and down into the valley of the Virgin River. The spot chosen by Brigham Young for the new Dixie Mission. Here they camped in their wagons until the city could be surveyed. Then on a certain day in February, 1862, they drew lots for home sites. Silentation. David Cannon. Ephraim Higgins. Willie, look what we drew. Block 36, slot C. One of the choicest locations. It is? Well, an acre on the very southeast corner of town. Near the river for hauling water and only a couple of miles from the fields where I'll be farming. David, that's wonderful. It's, uh, right down this street. Street? Well, in case you don't know it, madam, you are now standing on the main street of St. George. <laughs> the city of St. George. Like the city in the Bible. You don't pay attention in church as you should, darling. The city is great, people are few, and the houses are not yet built. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, uh, Sister Sarah. Uh, what did you draw, Sister Sarah? Block 9, Lot A, off the public square. Oh, I'd hoped maybe we'd be neighbors. Uh, what are you going to do with those willows? Going to weave them to make a hut. I'll fill in the cracks with mud, and it'll be snug as an Indian basket. And if you two are wise, you get busy on one for yourselves, instead of standing there making a public spectacle of yourselves. I guess that's good advice. How do you go about weaving a house? Well, you leave that to me. At least I can help with it. the mud pie part of it. And you'll do nothing of the kind. You're going to stay down in the wagon camp with the baby. And what's more, I'm not even going to let you see our house till it's finished. All right. Now you can open your eyes and look. How do you like it? David, you built that? All by myself. You're wonderful. I think that wood is better than willows and mud, don't you? Oh, yes. Much better. Well, come on. I want you to see the inside.
uh, this dirt will pack down very hard, be almost as good as the wood floor. And then after we move our stuff in, it'll look a lot different. I know you. You can make any place look home-like. I'll try. Do you remember when we moved into our first home in Salt Lake City? Yes. It was the happiest day of my life. And the very first thing we did? We knelt and dedicated ourselves to it. Oh. Oh, yes. Let us do the same thing here. Here? It's our home, darling, just as that one was. Our new home. God of Zion, bless thou this home. May it always be worthy in thy sight and in the sight of our fellow men. Amen. The Mormon pioneers went to work with a zeal for which they are famous. The new settlement teemed with activity. Land was grubbed. Irrigation ditches dug. Fields plowed. Public buildings erected. Wilhelmina Cannon did her part like all the rest, but her heart wasn't in it. I told you you'd have him in unbleached muslin. Most of the folks in the new colony were still living in their wagons or in temporary shelters. Wilhelmina kept telling herself she was lucky to have four walls and a roof over her head. I don't mind that. It's the place itself. The emptiness. The barrenness. The awful ugliness of it all. The colony is new yet. Give us time. <laughs> I just feel starved. Starved? You wouldn't understand. forgotten about the bookshelves. As soon as I have time, I'm going to make them for you. Never mind. It would help, wouldn't it? Not only the inside of the place, David. It's everything outside. I'm going to grub the brush off our land in the spring. You can't change the color of the soil, though. That awful raw red. Well, no. Well, the outlandish shape of the mountains. Well, it's a strange country, I grant you. It takes some getting used to, but... Well, in its own way, I, I think it's rather beautiful. Beautiful? About as beautiful as an Indian in war paint. David, I'm sorry. I should be happy here. Having you and the baby ought to be enough. But it isn't. If you could show me anything about this country that was lovely. One single thing. And if I could? Then I'd feel it was worthwhile staying here and working for the future. One single thing of beauty.
quiet. All is well. All is well. One and all, you have accepted the hardship, rejoiced in the sacrifices, and dedicated yourself to the task of transforming this great wilderness to the glory of God. Through Milton into May, the fields of the Dixie Mission have been plowed and planted with corn and cotton, grain and sugar cane. City brung the mail. Mail? Any letters for me? Well, most likely. Several sacks have it back there. Letters and newspapers. Oh, I haven't seen a newspaper in five months. Nephi, could I please? Would you just... I'm sorry, sister. My orders is to deliver the whole kit and boodle to Apostle Snow. And he'll cry them off in the public square. I'll be there. All right. Get up. We danced to a real string orchestra until way after midnight. I wish you could have been there. Love, Marianne. If you read those letters anymore, you're going to wear the paper out. Territorial ball must have been beautiful. I can just picture Marianne in blue taffeta with hoops. I'll make you some hoops, darling, if you'd like them. Out of what? A barrel? <laughs> Go back. But darling, we've only just started here. Someday? I don't know, honey. You mean we might have to stay here for the rest of our lives? Well, let's just take it day by day. I believe you really want to stay. I have no choice. Well, I guess I'll go to bed. It gets to be morning before you know it. David, suppose... Suppose you had to choose between this life here and me. Well, that's something, fortunately, I don't have to worry about. I'm here, and I have you. And I'm happy. for a breath of fresh air. See you this evening, honey. Bye. just getting some things in order. Where are you going? You can't fool me. You're going somewhere. Yes, I am. I'm going back to Salt Lake City. You and David and the baby. Just me and the baby. What for? For good. For really? It's all arranged. I talked with Nephi last night. He's picking us up in the wagon in a few minutes. Are you crazy? I've stood this place as long as I can, Sarah. 
You unpack that trunk. No, not. I'm leaving. You can't. Oh, yes, I can. And nobody's going to stop me. I'll tell Apostle Snow. I'll tell the heads of the church. Tell anyone you want. I'm going. I'm going, Sarah. Do you hear me? I'm going. You little fool. Don't you know if you commit a sin like that, you'll be punished? There couldn't be a worse punishment than living here. Maybe you think the rest of us find it easy. Maybe you think we like hunger and hardships and loneliness. Well, let me tell I you... I don't want to hear. <laughs> He fell off a canyon wall and broke his leg. He ain't come to yet. We'll go fetch Brother Kimball. He'll fix that leg up good as new. Here, let me do that. you fell from a canyon wall. I was after some flowers. These? I didn't know I still had them. They're sago lilies. Later on, the hills around here will be covered with them, they tell me. Thick as stars in the sky. But I, I didn't want to wait a week or... Even a day when it meant so much. You risked your life to... to... Ever since you told me how you felt about this country, I've been... I've been trying to find something I could show you that was beautiful about it. Oh, David. I'm afraid they got a little bit smashed when I fell. But they are pretty, aren't they? They're the loveliest things I've ever seen. Fairy bells. Or butterflies. Oh, <sighs> blind us. Any place where a woman finds love like yours is beautiful anyway. Sister Wilhelmina. Brother Nephi. Brother Neff, I get along. All right. Get up. David and Wilhelmina Cannon have long since passed from this earth. But the sago lilies, now the official state flower of Utah, still bloom each spring in all their glory on the red hills around St. George. And in the town, you'll still find plenty of folks who knew and loved Wilhelmina, who remember her as a smiling, happy little lady, always praising the beauties of the land she lived in. <laughs> 